Hey everybody, we are here, Tippett's Brook Park. It's a Friday afternoon, early evening. It's raining. I was gonna save this till tomorrow, but I just couldn't wait. This whole thing is gonna go through the weekend probably. We're gonna take it to a bunch of spots. I have a product that I'm excited about that I wanna try out. This is the EPF Swim, a one inch soft plastic swim bait. If you don't know, EPF, Extreme Philly Fishing, one of my major fishing influences, YouTubing influences, uh, and he just came out, he, he collaborated with Euro Tackle and came out with his own soft plastic swim bait, claiming that there's not much out there on the market in the way of uh, small uh, paddle-tailed swim baits. So I've already seen Leo catch a bunch with these things. Now it's time to try it out ourselves. I want to stick to some very public spaces uh, in homage to, you know, the places you normally see EPF fishing at. You know, I've seen enough of his own lure reviews to know that he would appreciate a fair review, unbiased. So as much as I want great things to happen, maybe they won't. And, you know, we don't have to necessarily blame the lure. This is a tough spot. You, you know this is a tough spot for me, but I want to see what it can do. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to take it to a bunch of spots this weekend. and. Uh, you know, see what kind of damage we can do. All right, without further ado, this is the EPF Swim by Eurotackle. Okay, so we're gonna at least start by fishing under a float, uh, mainly because as you may know, this is a very snaggy location and uh, I don't like losing things, especially brand new things. I wanna note that I also got the Eurotackle uh, tungsten soft lock jig heads. This is, uh, I think this is 1 16th ounce pink and uh, size 6 hook. And then we're going to slap one of these slap one of these jobbers on there. So pink on pink. But I got some other colors too that you might see. All right, so Euro Tackle uh, Micro Finesse, they, they, they tout this S pheromone technology. I know pheromones are like, uh, you know, odors that animals give off to uh, usually to attract mates, I believe. But... Uh, so I'd like to know a little more what that's all about. But, all right, so let's just try to make sure we slip this on so that the paddle tail is uh, where it should be. All right, that looks good to me. Uh, this is once again pretty light, a pretty light setup, but not the janky reel or the telescoping rod from when I was here catching bass a couple weeks ago. What the? F all right, here we go. Big moment here for Leo. So I'll try this in all different iterations, but right now we're vert vertical jigging. Um, we could just like jig off the bottom, uh, but again, I don't want to get snagged so early on. And the other approach would just be like a steady retrieve. Does the motion, the, the action looks good in the water. That looks like a, no, maybe not. I don't. To be fair to this lure, this this genre of lure, I can only think of two things I use that are somewhat similar, um, and that would be like a gulp minnow on a jig head, and uh, like the trout slayer and or tr uh, trout magnet slash panfish magnet. But uh, this is a little different. None of those are uh, paddle tailed. What I'm gonna do is just let it sit for a little while and then, you know, give it occasional twitches. Oh, something took it. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay, they like it, they like it. All right, you guys saw it. Whatever's down here, it came back for it. I think that was a bass, pretty sure that was a bass. Good sign, guys, good sign. Then took it. All right, definitely some interest here. All right, so we've had a pretty uh, decent seeming fish, probably a bass, uh, go after our little EPF swim so far. You know, bad hook set or whatever, didn't hook him, but then he followed it in a little bit and swiped at it again. All right pouring but we're not going to give up 
We're just gonna find a new spot. Okay, so let's 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 go a little more EPF style here to the brook. Now I have caught plenty of fish in this brook, but not in colder weather. So I don't know if it's still too early in the year to hope for fish right here. But uh, panfish, cat catfish, even bass could be right in here. I'm tempted to take the float off. It's not very deep. Oh, okay. Okay, we got some fish in here. Okay, okay, we got some bites. I don't know what they are. Might be too small. All right, the float is off. I just hope I can not lose my lure. We just straight retrieve. Don't even, don't even jig it. The tail does look tantalizing. Oh, fish. What do we got? Oh, it's a bass. He's stuck on a tree. Little bass, first EPF fish. All right, here we go. Getting wet. Well, took a little work, but nice little tiny aggressive bass on the EPF swim. Okay. All right. Well, that somehow seems appropriate. Nice little, nice little dinky bass. Just gonna give him a toss. And uh, okay, let's see if we can do some more damage now. Okay, well, at least I got to see a blue heron fighting an egret. Here they come, fly by. Check it out, blue heron fighting an egret. Dog fight, bird fight. All right, oh, they, now they're, oh, they're gonna crash into, oh. Jeez, I think this is a, a battle for territory. Still at it over there. Maybe it's a interspecies mating ritual. Oh, oh. There they go again, look at this, look at this. Flyby, flyby. That's an egret and a blue heron. They are not happy with each other. This is not a friendly encounter. As Leo would say, the things you don't see when you sit at home or something like that. Now we got an egret like high up in a tree. The, the heron is over here now. They've calmed down, I think. They're, they're, they're we're trying to chill out. Just a skirmish. I don't think we'll see any more from them tonight. All right, folks, it was a tough first outing for the EPF swim, but let's face it, the odds were really against us. A very difficult place to fish, even on a good day. And this was not a good day weather-wise. The water is really muddy. It was also kind of windy. It was raining for most of the time. But we did catch one fish. And, uh, I'm definitely not giving up on this bait. It, it looks beautiful. It moves beautifully. So I'm going to give it a few more tries this weekend. And you know what? I think it's about time EPF takes on NYC. Transition. Okay, here we are, my old stomping grounds, the Harlem Mirror. I'm also planning to hit the pool, which is uh, kind of that way. Um, or, you know, we could catch bass, we could catch sunfish, we could catch crappie, perch, bullhead. I mean, it's, it's all here. This is actually my first time back in Manhattan since the pandemic started. I do work in the Bronx, but I haven't been back here. So uh, things are looking uh, pretty normal, except everybody wearing a mask. Um, so. You know, this is exciting. These, uh, the, the first summer that I got back into fishing, I think it was 2016. This wasn't just my local lake, but it was like the only place I fished, like a lot. So, uh, but I, I haven't been back here uh, much in the last few years. And uh, I'm usually targeting largemouth bass, which 
I, I feel like would kind of be like a bycatch with the little old EPF swim. But let's uh, let's get get it wet and uh, get going here. Okay, still got the pink on pink. Oh, by the way, you might notice a lot of chipped paint here. This is not the jig head's fault. In an attempt to uh, get a snag out last night, it it snapped back and it smashed against a concrete bridge. So, my bad. All right, I'm gonna send it under a float now. This is more of your classic style bobber. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I noticed with those kind of foam floats, the uh, jig head is actually weighs it down a little too much and it's hard for me to see uh, it bobbing up and down. So it's just, just for more visibility really. I don't do this kind of vertical jigging under a float often, but when I do, I find that a lot of my bites happen like right after the drop. There we go. Someone just hit it. Ah. Okay. Getting nibbles, getting nibbles. Ah. I had something little for a bit there. I feel like I need a smaller hook. These are small fish, I can tell. It's going to be very uh, underwhelming when you finally catch one, but. Anything, anything? Nah, I'm just going for panfish today, but there are no bites, nothing. Bites, but they're they're smaller. I, I actually just had something on, but but uh, nothing yet. How about you guys? Yeah, it's rough so far. Okay, new location. This is the pool. Uh, it's on the Upper West Side, uh, maybe 106th Street or so. Um, you've seen me here before, but not in years. Um, this one was always known for bigger panfish, but smaller bass because I was sick of I was getting bites down at the mirror But I think they were mostly uh, Smaller sunfish that couldn't even get the hook in their mouth uh, Except for one towards the end that may have been a larger bluegill or maybe a bass, but uh, didn't catch it. So um, We have changed location. We have changed the color. I'm gonna go with chartreuse with it Finally a fish, just a little bluegill, not skunked. The pomis, a craculus. Still guys, winter color. Okay guys, this is uh, our final shot of the weekend. Uh, here at the site where I broke my foot, if that's any foreshadowing of what's about to happen. Um, so, uh, weekend didn't go as I planned. When I got the EPF swim, I, uh, I figured, hey, this is a good chance to, uh, you know, honor a fishing YouTuber I like, support him a little bit, but also, you know, if I do well with it, maybe put a good video out. And as things usually go with fishing, uh, things didn't go nearly as I planned it. So then it brings me to this crossroads, it's like, well, what do you do when uh, things did not go as expected or when everything kind of went wrong? And the answer is, you just keep going. You just keep going. So I figure this, is, this, this spot, if the fish are here, I have a good shot. This, the, the EPF swim seems like something they would be into. I caught them on the, uh, the, the gulp minnow a few times here, as well as, uh, Gosh, I think it was the uh, spinnerbait, um, among other things. So anyway, we're just gonna hope for the best and, and know that, uh, you know, good things happen when you least expect it. Will they happen today? I don't know. I don't know. But we're here to try. And it doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. Going out of float, it's always gonna be a risk for snags, but uh, so far I don't see any fish. fish. All right. Little bass. Got to start somewhere. I, I wasn't <laughs> a little largey. Just starting to think that 
it definitely you know last time i was here it was like every cast something would hit it so i guess they're a little more spread out maybe this time of year but hello hi thank you that's not a fish it's a stick there we go nice healthy red breast not very big but thick that'll bring our uh, species total up to three someone's eating off the top over there all right folks this is where i get wet zero f given Some cold water. Guess who doesn't care? No way there's no problem. Alright. I know we're gonna catch stuff here. That's what we're working with. <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're hitting the top here. That almost makes me think there's trout in here. I'm almost positive there are not trout in here, but that'd be cool if there were. I think they're just red breasts. This one. Red breast. I think this was all I caught here last time. Red breast and a few little largemouth. Might have been a bluegill or two. There's a nice. Oh, it was just a red breast, but another one. I just broke off after saving the lure millions of times. A uh, little color change here. So this is the black color with a chartreuse um, jig head, and this is the 132nd ounce. Last one I was using was the, the 1 16th, just to maybe keep it from getting snagged as much. Now I would have a black jig head, but actually when I ordered them, which was the same day that the uh, EPF swim went live, uh, this was the only color that was available for the 132nd ounce. There we go. Just another red breast, but on a different color. This one. Smallest fish of the day. Another red breast. See, it's funny, like, yesterday, I'm getting all the bites at the mirror, thinking, oh, these are probably sunfish that are, you know, too small to get their mouth around it, but even the bluegill I caught at the mirror kind of blew that theory out of the water, no pun intended, and these fish certainly are too. All right, so, hey, does this lure catch fish? Certainly. Does it have great action? Yes, I've witnessed it myself. When it comes down to reviewing a lure, it's like, yes, functionality is very important. Does it catch fish is very important. But also, there's so many conditional factors that come into it where it's like, can I really give this a fair review? If first of all, I don't have too much experience using these kind of lures. The conditions this weekend, this whole weekend were not great because it rained a lot. So the water was muddy, it was high, it was colder. Or maybe those are great conditions, I don't even know. But does this lure work? Yes. Does it look pretty in the water? Yes. Um, does it have great action? Yes. Oh, that paddle tail gives a nice wiggle. I'm sure the fish love it. I do have a few questions about the soft lock technology in the in the jig heads, but that's not really what we're reviewing here. Um, only because that little rubber stopper slides along with your, your lure. I would think that it would stay in one spot and the lure would slide over it. Um, however, that being said, I mean, it, it holds into place flush with the, the jig head. So uh, I, I can't really complain about it. I just, I'm just kind of curious what is supposed to happen or if maybe I'm using it wrong. Anyway, so that's, that's where things stand right now. Mm. Trying to pull the tail off. That's what's happening here. Oh, 
nice one. And it's a bluegill. I'd say this is our nicest specimen all day. Okay. Species count up to... Oh, no, we already caught a bluegill yesterday, but that's a nice bluegill. Okay, buddy. Just right down this little hole here. Straight, straight in front of me. There's a nice one. Okay, I believe this is bluegill. So, uh, yeah, baby bluegill. So, the only color I haven't used, um, I haven't caught anything on this or the chartreuse, but I did use it yesterday. Okay. The bluegill color. Now, the, there's one color I did not order, and that's the white, but uh, they're all working. All right, I think that's all that uh, we're gonna find around here is red breast sunfish and the occasional bluegill or largemouth bass. Um, but there are perch here in the Bronx River. Um, I'm gonna go to another spot. I'm gonna go to an under the bridge spot that uh, I feel like might be the appropriate place to throw these. Um, and then we'll close it out. Okay, we're gonna close it out at uh, the uh, bottom of the dam at uh, Twin Lakes. It doesn't get any more extreme Westchester County fishing than this. Uh, I've had success in this little channel before. Not so much where the waterfall comes out or whatever you call it, the dam, the spillway. I've got a good feeling about this. Fingers crossed. I hope we can close out on a good note. All right, the one decent video I had from here, I really had to get deep into it before I found fish, so. Apologies for the dark, but uh, if I catch stuff, I'll bring them out, let you get a good look. Suspect we could get snagged in here too, though. Yep, look at that, first cast. Appears to be a bluegill. A bluegill who swallowed it. Dang. All right. Nice little bluegill. Let's get a picture of this guy. Okay, so I feel like the visibility of that bluegill color was a, a little rough being in the dark over there and it's relatively a clear lure so perfect time to try the only color that we haven't caught anything on yet except for white which I didn't buy yet um, so we're gonna do chartreuse on chartreuse see if that gets us some more bites here but we're already two bluegills in there we go Ooh. oh Sorry, my friend. Give you a quick, quick release because that was not a kind. Uh... Oh no! What I'm trying to do now is salvage him, use him for cut bait. I tried to, uh, you know, bring this as close to the tip of my rod as I could to, to, so it wouldn't slide around when I was trying to snag him. But then, as I was trying to do that, he seemed to get a second life there. So. Um, eh, I don't know, he, now he's kind of on the bottom. He did start wagging his tail a little bit and swimming. So, I don't know, maybe he's just stunned, but it's okay. Bluegill are uh, not an endangered species. They'll be all right. Just would have been nice to use the resource. Still a bluegill. Oof, barely hooked him right on the bottom of the lip. All right.
Yes. Ooh. Don't want to lose that, whatever it is. Oh, it's a pretty big bluegill. All right. Might be our biggest guy of the day. Right, guys I may go up to the main lake and just mess around get a little b-roll for the end here but uh, hey the EPF swim quality lure go out and get yourself one you know I had my challenges this weekend but today was a lot better and I have a feeling the best is yet to come for me with this lure I'd also like to take it out on the boat uh, and try to do some vertical jigging that way maybe even with my fish finder Another good point I should make is the price point is really good. It's it's three dollars and ninety nine cents for a nine pack. If you choose to get those soft lock Euro tackle jig heads, those are a little more. I think it's five ninety nine for a three pack. And of course, even though those are the recommended jig heads, I'm sure if you're really strapped for cash, you can find a cheaper option. So I don't know. I hope I did Leo proud. I hope this convinces you that this is a pretty worthwhile lure. You should probably keep it in your arsenal. But other than that, I think we're done here. Please like. Please subscribe and all. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and as always, fish like no one's watching. Peace.